Let's get started with marketing campaigns and we'll begin with email marketing campaigns. But before we build an email marketing campaign, let's look at what makes for an effective one. An email marketing campaign that your contacts will click on, that your contacts will read, and so on. There are two things really that we need to be wary of as creators of email campaigns. The one is what can we do? And the second one is what should we do? What do people expect to see? So what can we do? These are defined by standards. In 1997, there was a standard set and unfortunately it was a bit lacking in that it said that the actual presentation of an email would be left in the hands or is left in the hands of the, let's call it the email reader, the software creator. What this means is that since 1997, so you know over 20, 20 years ago now, we've had various software creating their own ways to display emails. So an email would be sent in HTML or, or whatever, and it would be displayed in various ways because it was left up to the actual reader. So Outlook, Gmail, uh, the various Apple readers, etc., etc. All these many, many um, email readers, they def they actually display email messages in their own way because of this lack of standards. This is why often we'll send an email from any platform and it will look slightly different on different devices. It's because of this lack of standards. So we need to be aware of that. We almost need to create an email with the most broadly accepted minimum way of, of, of displaying an email campaign. The second thing we need to be wary of is what do people expect to see? For example, these are images of billboards on the side of the road. We've probably all seen them. I saw some research recently and I'm, I'm really not sure if it's entirely correct. But it's said that people spend more time looking at these billboards than they do our emails. Yet for some reason we often create these long, long, long emails that aren't to the point, whereas the billboards are to the point. So perhaps we should be looking at these billboards and getting more to the point more quickly. That's really important. What I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate or, or show some good and some bad email campaigns. The first one is what I'd consider pretty bad. <clears throat> Not good, and I'll, I'll walk through it. I've removed the branding because the organization has improved this, this email campaign since. So the logo would normally be here. I've removed it. Let's start at the top. These colors, for example, I don't think are great here. It might be part of their branding. The issue is, however, that we use color to catch people's attentions. So we'll use a button, a big red button, a green button, whatever, a call to action, because it catches people's eyes. Going down the page a little bit, double column, nothing really wrong with that, particularly if we're using a MailChimp layout, because they are mobile responsive, they look good on small screen devices. But it just seems to be more common these days that we have a single column. This is a table of contents, what we call anchor links. If we click on one of these links, it takes us to somewhere else in the email. There are two issues here. If we need anchor links, we've got too much content. Many, many people do not read down an email. They do not scroll down. The second thing is, um, I believe the latest versions of Android and iOS actually strip out the anchor links because they're trying to force senders just to send less information because people, again, just are not reading. This here, this section here, above what we call above the fold, in other words, people don't have to scroll down, is gold. This is where most people will read and click. Therefore, this needs to be our number one story, our number one thing we're trying to sell or convey. And it should be our most important story. This, look, Lunar New Year might be the most important story, and that's fine. 
We have to be careful of colors. There is something called Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, and it states that people that are part of site might have problems seeing where there isn't enough contrast between colors, and there just clearly is not enough contrast between the color of the text and the background. Also, the size of the text is very small. This main text here is probably about 10 point. <clears throat> Excuse me. Typically, we send in about 16 point body text now. I've noticed that Uber, one or two of the recent emails they're sending is actually 20 point text. So it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger because we just need to be very obvious to the reader what it's about. In our emails these days as well, we don't give the entire story on an email. We very rarely do. We give a teaser and then we have a button where someone goes somewhere else to our blog or wherever to read more. Probably the biggest issue I have with this is just the sheer length. This email is absolutely insanely long. A lot of the email readers now, particularly Gmail, which is the biggest email provider at the moment, they will just cut an email if it's too long. So for example, if you have too much content, your consumers will see something like this, where the email just doesn't display or is cut if it's too long. So the guidelines uh, Gmail give are anything more than 102 kilobytes will be cut. The problem is what is 102 kilobytes? Look, it's something fairly long. As for images on emails, we need to be so, so careful. For one thing, images, when we use them, and, and images are important, images need to be meaningful. They need to convey the content. We also need to be very careful on text on images. So, sorry, excuse me. Using an extreme example, this email was sent from from a retailer here in Australia and a lot of their text has been included on images which you see doesn't display and it just does not look professional and people will just mark it as spam or delete the email quite simply another thing is that if we have more than I think it's roughly 20% of text on an image we have a high chance of our image going straight to spam very much like online advertising. The way we can check if we have more text on an image is Facebook provide a free tool called Image Text Check, and this is actually designed for Facebook advertising, but it works equally well for email campaigns. So we can run our image through here just to check we don't have too much text, because again, a lot of spam filters do check for the amount of text on an image and we don't want more than about 20% because in the good old days, or well, it still happens quite a bit, spammers would add text, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, spammers would add text onto an image or would save text as an image um, where normally they would get caught by spam filters. So spam filters started looking and saying, if you have too much text on an image, we're sending you straight to spam. So this was our example of, of not a great email. We now need to start looking at what actually therefore makes for a good email. One thing we'll notice in good emails is that they typically use a very common format. And the format they use, and, and we need to just look at the blocks. They'll use a logo, then an image, then a heading, then a text, then a button. And the footer is the legal stuff that happens at the, at the bottom of an email, an unsubscribe link, etc. But this is very typical. And the more emails you look at, and I urge you to look at, subscribe to uh, your competitors' um, emails and so on, and look and, and critique them for yourself, what they're doing well and what they're not. Of course, what we're looking at here is very much not a newsletter. But what we do is we just repeat the blocks for a newsletter. So it's just about blocks, building blocks. If we want an image, we use an image content block. We want a heading, we use a a text or a heading or a text content block and so on. So logo, image, heading, text, button. The reason why, and, and we'll look at a few in a moment, the reason why so many major organizations use this layout, and they're often not even full width, is because of that standards issue. 
we need to create content that will show for most people. If we've got 100,000 emails that we're sending out, we don't want 30% of them not being able to, to be seen by people because of the, the email reader they're using, because standards don't work. We don't want 30,000 people potentially not buying because they don't even see our email or it just doesn't look right to them. We need to use a minimum set of standards. But also, more and more, people just expect to see this layout. Okay, yours might differ slightly, but this is generally what's seen. So, logo, image, heading, text button. Let's look at a few emails. Um, sorry, I'll just go across to, uh, to a demonstration account to show you some emails. I've got some examples here, and, and we'll just look at them very quickly. Let's first off look at an Uber, an Uber email, which I, I think they're brilliant. Logo, image, heading, text, and a button. Okay, this, this email reader is really not good at all. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Normally the button would show, but just, just excuse that for now. Just a demonstration. Okay, so again, logo, image, heading, text, and a button. Nice big text. It's very simple to see what it's all about with the heading, and the image is very meaningful. Looking at one or two more. Disney, logo, image, text, button, image, text, button, image, that's an animated gift, text, button. So they've left out the heading, but you can see it's the same. So they've just repeated that formula because they've got more than one item. They've just repeated that formula on and on and on. Of course, often people will say to me, yeah, but Gary, I want more design. I want more flair. I want more whatever. We've just got to be so careful um, with the limitations that a lot of people won't see it. But when people do say that to me, I often say to them, okay, so when you think of design, etc., who makes the tools to do it? People say Adobe, of course. So let's look at Adobe. The makers of Photoshop and a lot of those other tools we use for design. Let's look what they're doing. Right, logo, image, header, text, button, and maybe a bit more. It's exactly the same. Also, not full width, logo, image, header, text, button. So it's that layout, logo, image, heading, text, button. And again, like we saw on, on Disney, if you are doing a sort of newsletter or you have more than one um, article that you, you, you want to have, you'll just repeat them image heading text button and then you would just repeat image heading text button image heading text button and so on and on we go down the screen that's what people expect to see and that's what works well so in the following video what we're going to do is we're going to create an email campaign using very much this layout